26, Blessed Felicia Meda, Virgin, Second Order. Felicia was a descendant of a very distinguished and wealthy family of the Meda. She was born at Milan in Lombardy in 1378. She had good parents who reared the pious and gifted child in the fear of God and left nothing undone that could be of advantage to her spiritual development. In a very short time, she acquired a remarkable command of the Latin language. She lost both father and mother at a very early age and therefore united herself still more intimately with God. When she was 12 years old, she made a vow of perpetual chastity and then entered the convent of the poor Clares at St. Ursula in Milan. The devil endowed and died endeavored to make convent life miserable for her by subjecting her to severe temptations and frightening ap apparitions. But Felicia did not permit herself to be overcome by fervent prayer in the, works of the, psal in the words of the psalmist, O God, come to my assistance. O Lord, make haste to help me. She put the spirits of darkness to flight and per persevered steadfastly in her vocation. When the abbess of the convent died, 1425, the community unanimously elect chose her for her successor. In this position, she did her utmost by word, deed, and example to promote the true religious spirit in her community so that its good name spread far and wide, even reaching the ears of Pope Eugene IV. It induced the Pope and the Vicar General of the Observance, St. Bernardine of Siena, to entrust her with the establishment of a new convent of poor clares at Pissarro. Despite her advanced age, Felicia and seven companions made the journey from Milan to Pissarro on foot when the founders of the convent, the Princess of Montefalcro, offered her the carriage in which she had come out to meet the new community. Felicia humbly declined the offer and entered the town on foot with the rest of her companions. Felicia spent four years in this new foundation, received a great number of new members, and reared and strengthened them in the spirit of our Holy Father, St. Francis. She died in the order of sanctity in 1444. Many miracles were wrought by God and testimony of the holiness of his servant. Her body was laid to rest in the convent she had founded 400 years later. It was transferred to the cathedral at Pissarro. Pope Pius IX solemnly enrolled her among the blessed. On our conduct in temptations, one, consider that temptations such as Blessed Felicia experienced in the beginning of her religious life are the lot of those who are sincere in their purpose of serving God. The Holy Spirit himself tells us, Son, when you come to the service of God, stand in justice and in fear and prepare your soul for temptation. Ecclesiastes 2 verse 1. And St. Paul writes, And all who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. 2 Corinthians 3.12 Sometimes these temptations come from the devil, sometimes from the world, sometimes from our flesh. Only God can help us at such times. Imitating Blessed Felicia, we must call upon God for help with the plea, O God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. We may also say with childlike confidence, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. God is powerful enough to help us even if the whole world and hell with all its cohorts should rise up against us. Moreover, he will help us because he has promised to do so and he's faithful. The infernal tempter has been a liar from the beginning and as a liar we should resist him when he tortures us with all kinds of anxiety. Because of the lack of confidence in God, have you not sometimes allowed temptation to upset you unduly? 2. Consider that along with confidence in God, the knowledge of our unworthiness and weakness must constantly increase if we wish to retain our balance in temptation. Once when the holy hermit Anthony saw the whole world covered with the snares of the devil, he sighed and asked, Who can safely pass through this? And he received the, this answer, Humility alone can do it. Be humble, therefore, in your judgments of others, even when they have had the misfortune to fall into sin. Likewise, be humble in your judgment concerning yourself. Temptations show you just what you can do if God does not support you. But to the humble he will lead, he will lend his assistance, and he will preserve them from harm. Examine yourself. Is a lack of humility perhaps the reason why you are tempted so much? 3. Consider that when our Savior once cured a demoniac, he said, This kind can go out only by prayer and fasting. 
Matthew 9, 28. In certain temptations, it may be necessary to add acts of mortification to our confidence in God and our humble prayer for assistance. At times, we may have to bring the rebellious flesh under the subjection of the Spirit by fasting and chastisements. And always it is necessary to place a check on the tongue and speaking, on the ears and hearing, on the eyes and seeing, if we do not wish to expose ourselves to numerous temptations. Watch over your senses and sometimes think of the souls who are now suffering the pains of purgatory because of their lack of watchfulness. Prayer of the Church, O God, who did put the Virgin Blessed Felicia to the test by permitting her to be assailed with many temptations, and did strengthen her with a spirit of fortitude, granted her prayers and intercession, that we may mercifully be freed from all the snares of the enemy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed Felicia Maida, pray for us.